What's going on guys? It's Greg here, aka New York Prepper. In this video, I want to talk about another overlooked prep, and this is overlooked prep number 34. And I'm going to talk to you guys about signal flares and flares and why flares are important. And I notice a lot of preppers overlook having flares in their preps and stockpiling flares. Flares have a million different uses, but I'm going to cover a few basic uses and talk about why they're so important to stockpile and why they're going to be useful after SHTF. Before I get into that, I just want to give thanks to my friend Prepper Camper, and it was actually his idea for me to talk about flares as another overlooked prep. So if you guys get a chance, can you go over to his YouTube channel and subscribe to him? He's also a prepper and he's a Christian based prepper. So his channel focuses on prepping, guns, survival and Christianity. So if any of those topics interest you, check out Prepper Camper. I'm going to leave a link to his channel in the description box down below. And he was one of my first moderators on my channel, and he's done a lot to help me out. He's really helped me a lot with my live streams and keeping an eye on the live chats. And uh, he's given me a lot of useful advice over the years with my channel. So please check out his channel and show him some love. So let's get into why flares are important. And so the first thing is you need a way to start a fire in an emergency and flares can help you do that. Uh, most flares can last up to 15 minutes and they can burn in any conditions. You can even put them under water. They're very hard to extinguish. You basically have to let them burn out. So you can use a flare to start a fire. If you're in an emergency situation and you have to start a fire for whatever reason, there's so many reasons why you would need to start a fire very quickly. Uh, obviously, if you're hypothermic and you're in a survival situation or a bug out situation or a get home situation and you need to warm yourself, you may not have the dexterity in your hands to start a fire with a ferro rod and fine tinder that you scavenge from your surroundings. Okay, in situations like that, you need to get the fire going quick. And a flare is the quickest way to start a fire. It's faster than a lighter. It's pretty much faster than anything else you have, except maybe gunpowder in your bullets, okay, in your cartridges for your uh, CCW. So you can... Pop the top on this flare and get a fire going in seconds. As long as you have some kind of kindling or fuel wood, you'll get a fire going in any condition with a flare. So for a bug out bag, for even a hiking pack, a hunting pack, you know, I carry these two flares in my hunting pack, in my hiking pack, and I also keep two flares in my bug out bag. Okay? And why do I have two flares and not just one? So I keep one flare for emergency fire starting if I'm hypothermic or if I need to start a fire to signal rescue. I keep one flare, okay, for that purpose alone. And then I keep another flare for signaling, okay. So I keep a minimum of two flares in my bug out bag or my hiking pack, my hunting pack, whatever, uh, wilderness pack. Um, I keep two flares, one for starting a fire, one for signaling. And uh, these particular flares, I'm going to do a review on them. They're mini flares. They're made by Orion. And they're called Fire Pit Pro. And they burn up to seven minutes. They're eco-friendly. And I'm going to do a separate review on these mini flares. But they're perfect because they're lightweight and they're small. So you can even fit these in your cargo pocket of your pants or you can easily fit this in a day pack or a bug out bag. 
So I keep two of them. They're very, you know, lightweight. They're not heavy and they could save your life. Um, you know, whether it's a bug out situation or if you're in the wilderness and you're doing some training for bugging out or you're hiking, you're practicing your survival skills. So fire starting is a big reason why you want to have a flare. And again, I'm going to do a review on these. I'm going to do a test burn. They're supposed to burn up to seven minutes. And then moving on to the other reason why you want to have a flare is for signaling. Now, if we're talking about SHTF, the end of the world as we know it, WROL, uh, Teotihuacan, uh, nuclear war, World War III, collapse of society, collapse of the dollar, collapse of the economy, whatever your scenario is, EMP, um, signaling is going to be always something that you you may need to do okay now you can signal people in a variety of different ways but you have to remember that you know if you have a battery operated tool like a flashlight if you've run out of batteries you're going to have to find other ways to signal okay and if we're talking about tactical situations you know you may need to signal some friendlies for whatever type of uh, maneuver you're doing and having a flare is a great way to signal someone in a tactical situation and if we're talking about survival and bugging out I mean you can use a flare for signaling as well obviously if you're bugging out you're probably not going to want to signal people because then it's going to draw attention to you you're going to want to be concealed but there may be certain situations where you have to signal other people, okay? Again, if you're performing some type of a maneuver and you need to signal a friendly, it could be an ambush, it could be a recon, it could be anything, okay? You may have to signal a friendly and a flare is a great way to do that, okay? And if we're talking about survival, obviously signaling rescue is very important. And if you spend a lot of time in the wilderness, you should definitely have one of these flares, at least one for signaling purposes. And there's many other things you could do with a flare. Um, I mean, there's just so many things you could do with flares, but they're really, really important. And I think a lot of preppers overlook the importance of them. So just to recap, you know, flares are important for starting fires, and you can use fires for many, many different things. Uh, in addition to keeping you warm, fires can also ward off predators. You, you can use fires to purify water and kill parasites in water and cook food. And another thing with flares, too, is that you can actually use a flare as a self-defense weapon against a predatory animal like a bear so if you're bugging out and uh, you know you're bugging out and you made camp for the night and you're about to go to bed and sleep in your hammock or whatever situation you have set up uh, or even just sleeping on the ground uh, you may get woken up in the middle of the night by a bear Okay, or maybe even a, a wolf or a coyote or some other type of predatory animal that's investigating what you are. There have been cases of people getting killed in their sleep by bears. Okay, and I don't think a lot of preppers understand how dangerous it is to bug out into a wilderness area if you have minimal weapons and minimal skills especially related to dealing with dangerous animals, okay? Bears are pretty much everywhere in the U.S. now. Black bears, brown bears, and polar bears, they're spread all over North America, okay, in different parts of the continent, all right? But black bears are almost everywhere, and there have been situations of people that have gone camping, and they got killed in their sleep, by a black bear okay a lot of those situations happened in Canada and if you don't believe me you can look it up for yourself um, you know and black bears happen to be one of the animals that kills the most people in North America one of the it actually the black bear kills more people than brown bears do okay 
So you always have to remember that, you know, there's more black bears than brown bears. And yeah, they may not be as aggressive many times, but there's a lot of them, okay? And the chances of you running into that one bear that's a man-eater or is very aggressive is much higher than a brown bear, okay? Because brown bears are localized to Montana, Wyoming, Idaho, and Alaska, all right? And you can take one of these flares and you can attach it to a stick or a, a spear with some duct tape or whatever kind of tape you have on you or even a little bit of paracord. You can tie it and you can ward off a bear with one of these flares, okay? Uh, bears and predators, they don't like fire and they don't like the smell of smoke, okay? When they smell smoke they run away because they know that fires in the woods are bad okay because animals are conditioned to understanding that brush fires are bad so if they get the littlest hint of smoke they turn around and go the other way so um you know having a flare can can even save your life against a predatory animal but again you know fire starting signaling you know for tactical purposes you may want to signal your friendlies to let them know that you're in a, in position or they want to signal you and let you know that they're in position whatever the situation is you can also use them for illumination if you're trying to illuminate an area if you're let's say storming a building or you're clearing a building and there's no light there's no ambient light after shtf there's not going to be as much ambient light because the grid is going to be down. So if you're trying to occupy a building, let's say an office building or uh, a school or some other type of hasty bug out location, you're going to need to clear some of the building to make sure it's safe. And you're not going to have a lot of ambient light. So you may want to use that flare and throw it into certain areas for illumination purposes. Okay. Um, and I just uploaded a video on my top 10 hasty bug out locations the last part of the series where I talk about the top five hasty bug out locations and I recommend you guys go and check that video out but that's all I got for now thanks for watching stay tuned for a test of these flares coming soon and as always take care God bless and don't forget the three P's Prepare, practice, and persevere.